Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and today Apple released iOS 26.1 Beta 4. It's available to developers and soon to public beta testers on all iOS 26 supported devices. Now this came in at 2.48 gigabytes on my iPhone 17 Pro Max and was about the same size on the other devices you see here. Along with this, Apple also released iPadOS 26.1 Beta 4, macOS 26.1 Beta 4, tvOS and HomePodOS 26.1 Beta 4, along with VisionOS. 26.1 beta 4 and watch OS 26.1 beta 4 as well. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings, then we'll go down to general, then about. As you can see, the build number is 23B5073A. We may have just one more beta or we could have the RC next. But in this particular update, there is no modem update coming from beta three to beta four, but there are some other features. The first thing has to do with liquid glass. Many people have wanted to adjust this for quite some time, and now you can adjust it a little bit. If you go into your settings, then we go down to display and brightness. We now have a new option for liquid glass. We can make it clear or tinted. I never thought we'd see the day that Apple would allow us to adjust the overall OS and the way it looks, but now you can see clear and tinted. So clear, for example, looks like this. So if we take a look at it, go into music, take a look at the bottom here. If I switch this over to what we have with tinted switch back to music, you'll see that it darkens. So it's more of a frosted or dirty glass almost. So instead of being a frosted glass, it's completely darkened. And the same is true with things such as notifications. You'll see they're all dark here. And if I switch it back over to clear, pull down again, you'll see they're now clear. So it's fully adjustable, however you would like. And it doesn't seem to change things such as the dock though. The dock and the control center, at least in this update, have stayed the same. The bouncy icons and everything are still here when it comes to the control center and maybe even a little bit more in beta four. So you can see that here, but you can now change this to whatever works best for you. I prefer the clear icons. Let me know which ones you prefer, whether it's clear or tinted. Now back under display and brightness, if we scroll to the bottom, you'll see we have display zoom. If we go in here, they finally updated the wallpaper with the iOS 26 wallpaper. So that's something that wasn't in beta three that's in beta four now. Another thing they've updated has to do with the camera. I think this one will make a lot of people happy. If we scroll to the bottom here, you'll see there's an option for lock screen swipe to open camera. It says swipe left on the lock screen to quickly access the camera. So now if you lock the screen, many people accidentally open the camera just by swiping. Now we can turn that option off and it will no longer happen. So you can go here, swipe all you'd like and nothing happens. So if you want that turned off, there's now an option to leave it off or you can just leave it alone as it's enabled by default. Back within settings, if we go down to our apps and then go into phone, Within phone, if we scroll down, there's a new option for haptics. It says play haptics when a call is connected or dropped. So now you can disable that feature if you don't like it shaking your phone when a phone call is connected or just hanging up. That's something you can now enable or disable. Now in previous betas, I've mentioned how they've left justified or moved everything to the left with the overall menus and their settings and their descriptions of what's going on. This time around, they finally updated Apple Intelligence and Siri and made it left justified. So it's the same sort of description, but they've moved it to the left. Compared to the previous update, you'll see here with beta three, it was still centered. So they've changed it around. I think maybe this is getting ready for the fold. So everything's to one side. I'm not really sure, but that's maybe one of the reasons they may be doing that. Another thing they've updated has to do with the settings. Again, if we go into general and then we go to about, you can see at the top with beta three on the left, beta four on the right, where it says name at the top of about, they've now moved the actual name of your iPhone below the word name. This lets you see the entire name if you actually have this filled in. So I have this labeled based on the color of the iPhone and you'll see it's more easy to see now as it extends the entire width of the menu. Now within the code of iOS 26 and vision OS 26, it looks like there's a new developer strap coming to vision pro. This is something that they had with the first release. You'll see vision pro developer strap. It lets you connect it to a Mac. You have this really great sort of ejection tool here that comes with it. And it looks like there's a new version coming very soon. So with the release this week, you'll see that it's found in the code here. It says confirms there is indeed a new developer strap coming with M five vision pro is reported before. So you can see that here. 
Apple also released an update to their sports app. If we go into the app store here, you'll see a new version 3.4 and it says now it's easier for NFL and college football fans to follow games in real time with a new drive chart in live activities. It also says additional updates to help you keep up with your favorite sports. So that's available now. If you follow NFL or college football on the Apple sports app, you'll want to install that update. As far as anything else, well, it's possible there's new devices coming this week along with the new M5 iPad Pro, M5 MacBook Pro, as well as the Vision Pro M5. However, many people have hinted we could get a new Apple TV. However, we haven't seen that just yet. So I'm thinking we'll probably get those updates that we already know about and possibly some other updates we'll talk about in a bit. Now, as far as bugs and bug fixes, well, there's a couple things that have been fixed. If we go into notes, within notes, if you're using something with an accent, you'll see that they've now fixed it. So if you press and hold, it's now linear again, and it looks correct. And this works the same all throughout the OS, Telegram, and other apps as well. Another thing they've fixed in beta four has to do with the odd shadows we had behind some things in folders. So if you had a full folder like this, I just filled it up so I could show you there's no longer those odd shadows that show up behind it. So that's something they've fixed as well. App library is still a little bit slow when you go to search. So there's a delay there. Not everyone sees this, but again, it's consistent and repeatable. And for whatever reason, it's very slow. Once it's actually allowing you to search, it works fine. Promotion is fine and everything else, but it's just slow initially. Also the wallpaper bug seems like it may be fixed in this update. So if we get rid of these here, we'll swipe up. It may desaturate a little bit, but it mostly looks the same. So there may be a slight change here. It does seem improved over the previous beta though. Now, if we take a look at Apple's public facing release notes, we'll go into beta four release notes and scroll down. You'll see that we have some known issues. I talked about last week with airdrop where it says the airdrop icon in the iOS share sheet has some visual defects at the corners. They're still working on this, but they did resolve an issue for the lock screen. So if we go down to lock screen, it says resolved devices might sleep unexpectedly while using certain apps on the lock screen, for example, calculator timer and notes. So that's been resolved and hopefully it's fixed. Hopefully one other thing that's fixed for you is notifications. Many people on the public version that I'm running here on the iPhone air 26.0.1 are reporting that notifications are not coming in or people aren't receiving them. For example, I called my wife and my daughter the other day and they didn't get my phone call. I called them again, maybe thought they had a focus mode enabled, but they didn't, they didn't get any of my phone calls. I had to text them. They eventually saw it and then returned my call. I've heard this from multiple people with that issue. However, I, iOS 26.1, I haven't heard that very much and hopefully it resolves it. As far as releases this week, well, it's possible we could see an iOS 26.0.2. Mac rumors has seen it in their analytics already. We've heard rumors of this one and we could see it sometime this week. However, with the build number ending in an A for iOS 26.1 beta four, we could see iOS 26.1 RC as soon as next Monday. So it's possible they would release that update very quickly or within the next two weeks, I would expect iOS 26's public release, maybe by the 3rd of November. So that's typically what they do. However, we don't have any specific dates as Apple hasn't given them to us, but it seems like both of the versions are still in the works. So hopefully to resolve the notification issue, they could push that out this week. And then in a couple weeks, push out iOS 26.1. If you're wondering if you should install iOS 26.1 beta four, well, if you're on beta three, absolutely. I would highly recommend that. Make sure you're providing feedback if you're having issues in the feedback app. So if we go in here, make sure you're using this, providing feedback to Apple as you're having additional bugs, if they're not listed in the notes. Other than that though, if you're on iOS 26.0.1, I would wait for iOS 26.0.2 or the public release of iOS 26.1. I don't typically recommend anyone install a beta trying to solve an issue as it's not a public release and there could be additional bugs or problems with it. But we'll talk more about this in the weekend follow-up. And as far as overall performance, while well, I mentioned that a little bit, it generally seems smooth with occasional stutters, similar to what we've had before. Again, what I mentioned in the app library, sort of a delay there for whatever reason, but I did have a delay swiping from time to time, but things such as ProMotion once activated, if you're scrolling, or if maybe you're just watching a video playing a game, 120 Hertz seems to work fine or ramping up and down to 90 Hertz as it's variable.
As far as overall heat, well, the phone isn't warm at all, so that's a great sign. However, the 17 Pro and the Pro Max seem to dissipate heat very nicely, so no issues there. And as far as overall battery life, well, I'll have to continue to use this over the next week. I need to install that on my main phone, the iPhone Air right now, and see what it's like, but we'll test that and talk about it in the weekend follow-up. But for this phone, we'll take a look here and if we take a look at battery health, it's at 10 cycles with 100% capacity. And if we take a look at the overall usage, well, this one just today used one hour and 57 minutes of screen active time and used 16% of the battery. Most people report iOS 26.1 is quite good on battery, but again, we'll be testing that and talking about that in the weekend follow-up video. Let's take a look at storage. So we'll go to general and then we'll go under storage here, general and then iPhone storage. And if we scroll down, we have beta three on the left, beta four on the right, and we have 20.51 gigabytes usage on beta four, 20.55 gigabytes usage on beta three. If we go into it, you can see the overall usage. Apple intelligence is very similar, 6.67 versus 6.62 and 13.89 versus 13.88. So very similar storage sizes. Also, many people keep asking about system data. It varies. And if you go in here, it talks about it a little bit as it's cache storage. So it will go up and down as needed. So I would just ignore it unless you just can't install apps. Then I have a separate video on how maybe you can clear that out a little bit. When it comes to benchmarks, I did run initial benchmarks and scored 3,875 for single core, 9,628 for multi-core. That's pretty good overall. If we take a look at what we had on the weekend here, after using it for a few days, it's very well within the margin of error. A little bit higher for single core, a little bit lower for multi-core, but again, it's probably processing in the background and will take a few days to finish up with that. And so that's everything so far with iOS 26.1 beta four. Of course, I'll talk about more features if we find them in the weekend follow-up video. And of course, if you found anything, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.